This lesson deals with examples of NPN transistor circuits. You can find these notes in the course ebook in chapter 10 starting on page 4. Given this one transistor circuit with two resistors and two voltage sources and one NPN transistor, can you determine the state of the transistor? Now in this problem I've given the value of the voltage sources, the value of the resistors, and I also need to know what are the values of the parameters of the transistor Q1. And in our models we use three things. VB on, VC sat and beta F. Now some models don't use all of those, but they use some of them. For this transistor, VB on is 0.7, VC sat is 0.2, and beta F is equal to 100. Now to determine the state of Q1, we're going to do that by taking guesses. We're going to replace the transistor by the model associated with the guess. We need to know where are the terminals. Here's the collector of transistor 1, here is the base of transistor 1, and here is the emitter of transistor 1. Suppose for my first guess, I guess cutoff. Here's the schematic from our previous page. Here's where the collector, the base, and the emitter were. And the model is probably the simplest of all models. Simply, it's an erasing of the transistor. And we have an open circuit between the collector and the emitter and the base and the emitter. And what that's going to guarantee is that the base current is zero and the collector current is zero. If you recall from our model, we need to check that the voltage across the base emitter is less than or equal to VB on and that the voltage between the collector and the emitter is greater than or equal to zero. We're going to analyze the circuit based on that guess, and if those conditions are not met, then that's the wrong guess. In other words, we have a contradiction like we did for diodes. Let's go around this loop here. The rise in voltage equals the drops, so I have 56k times zero, base current, plus VBE. That's this equation right here. VBE is equal to 5 volts, but that's not less than 0.7, which is VBE on. We have a contradiction. We really could just stop here, but let's find the other voltage and just see how that one turned out. And here's my collector current of zero. The rise in voltage is VCE. There's also a rise in voltage across the 1K resistor with this direction of current. VCE plus zero times 1K is equal to 15. And that's this equation right here. The rise in voltage is equal to the drop. Solving for VCE, then we had the VCE is equal to 15. Is that greater than or equal to zero? Yes. In our guess, this was correct, but this wasn't. All you need is one contradiction. Q1 is not in cutoff. Let's guess the next most complicated model, which is saturation. For the saturation model, we're going to take the transistor out. Between the base and emitter, we're going to put VBE on, which was 0.7. Between the collector and emitter, we're going to put a voltage source of VCE sat. We're going to check that the base current is greater than or equal to zero. The collector current is greater than or equal to zero, but also their ratio is less than or equal to beta F. Let's find the base current. Here I got a common ground, so I could do a difference of node voltages. This node voltage of 5 minus this node voltage of 0.7 divided by 56k would be the base current, and that's 77 microamps. Is that greater than or equal to zero? Yeah, that checks. Let's find the collector current here, and again, that would be also the current in this resistor. If we take this node voltage, which is 15, minus this node voltage, which is 0.2, and divide that by 1k, we get 14.8 milliamps. Is that greater than or equal to zero? Yeah, so that checks. Let's check the ratio. 14.8 milliamps, I sub C, divided by 77 microamps, I sub B, is 192. But that's not less than beta F of 100. When we're operating along a curve, as we increase the collector emitter voltage, collector emitter stays constant, and when we go active, then the curve turns and the value of collector current stays constant. And this is what this is checking for here. It only needs one contradiction, so it's not in saturation. There is only one more guess, and that's active, so let's try that. Take the transistor out. Between the base and the emitter, we're going to put a voltage, VBE, on. Between the collector and the emitter, a current source of beta FIB. And then we have to check two things. That I sub B is greater than or equal to zero, and the voltage from collector to the emitter is greater than or equal to VCE set. Let's find the base current. And it's, again, the current in this 56K resistor. So I'll take the difference of those two node voltages, 5 minus 0.7 divided by 56K and 77 microamps. And that's greater than or equal to zero, so that checks. If this is positive, the collector current is positive because of the controlled source. It's 100 times bigger, or 7.7 .7 milliamps. Then lastly, let's find the collector emitter voltage. I'm going to drop across here in this direction. So if I go around the loop this way, I have a rise in voltage, a rise in voltage, and a drop. The rise in voltage of VCE plus the rise in voltage of I sub C times 1K equals the drop of 15 volts. But I sub C was 7.7 .7 milliamps. K in the milli canceling at 7.7 .7, subtracted from 15, and that's 7.3. That's greater than or equal to 0.2. That checks. So Q1 is active. I purposely picked the guesses so that I would go through all possible states. Is there a strategy for guessing? Uh, sort of. If I know that a voltage here is bigger than 0.7, 
then it's probably not in cutoff because current's going to flow into that base emitter diode. But in general, you have to take the guesses to find the answer. These answers are very dependent on the parameters. With a transistor, if you heat it up, the value of beta f actually increases. Let's repeat this last example with beta f equal to 300. And we get a different answer. If you go back to the saturation guess, we get the same value of base current. The collector current is still the same. And the ratio is equal to 192, as it was before, but now beta f is larger. This is now satisfied instead of being contradicted. We're actually in the saturation region. Now, since you can only be in one place, the active has to get contradicted. So let's just check to see if it does. If we were to guess active, with now the beta f equal to a 300, our base current would still be the same, but not, and that would make that 23.1 milliamps. Our calculation of VCE, which is 15 minus the drop across the 1K resistor, which had the collector current flowing through it, would now be a minus 8.1. And that's not greater than 0.2, so it's a contradiction. It's like the diode. The transistor is in one of three states. Now, we also had transition points. Let's take a look at a transition point example. Let's repeat the same example we just did, but let's unspecify the value of VCC and ask the question, what value of this battery would bring us to the edge of saturation? So we're normally in the active region with beta f equal to 100, but if the battery were to start to decay, now we're going to start to discharge, at what point would this go from being in the active region to the saturation region? We'll see later in the course that when you're in the active region, you can make an amplifier, and when you're in a saturation region, you can make a switch. Two very different applications. Now what's happening with the edge condition is that we're over-specifying the transistor state, and therefore we're under specifying one parameter in the circuit. Could be a voltage, could be a resistance, but just one parameter with each of the edge conditions. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the model in for the edge of saturation and work backwards and figure out what value of VCC would put us there. Our edge of saturation model looks like the saturation model with a voltage source between the base and the emitter of VBE on, a voltage source between the collector and emitter of VCE sat, but now we're gonna label that the current is equal to beta FIB. Here's our condition of over-specification. We do have to check that the base current is still positive. That was one of our checks if we were to make this guess. So let's again find the base current. And that's going to be the current in the 56K resistor. And this is going to be, again, 5 volts minus 0.7 over 56K. And so it's still 77 microamps. 100 times IB is equal to 7.7 .7 milliamps. Now the drop across this resistor is going to be 7.7 .7 milliamps times 1K, or 7.7 .7 volts. The rise in voltage of 0.2 the rise in voltage of 7.7 .7 would equal the drop of VCC. And that's this equation. VCC would equal 7.9 volts. It could start out at 15 volts and begin to decay or discharge, and could drop down to 7.9 volts, and this circuit would still be in the active region. But at this point, it transitions into the saturation region. And these are some examples of NPN transistor circuits.